I was born on March 9, 1939 at Okeilisa Odeondo in what is today Ondo State. My father was a schoolmaster and my mother was a housewife stroke uh, assistant in the arrangements of the midday meals at uh, the primary schools at the time. In 1950 December, uh, my father was transferred to this time Esauke and he was back home as it were after many years of working in other communities. I was myself in December 1950, packing my few belongings, getting ready to go to the secondary school I had gained admission to, which was Government College Ibadan, then as now still very well known. And so in January 1951, I began my secondary school education at Government College Ibadan and my tenure at Government College, which was originally supposed to be five years and five months, became seven years because we were the pioneer set that were entered for the higher school certificate then run by Cambridge on behalf of the uh, various countries of the world. So I took my Cambridge school certificate in 1955 and my higher school certificate in 1957, I think, yes, 1957, from January 1956 to December 1957. Then I had a stint as a secondary school teacher at the Baden Grammar School where uh, my late father's uh, friend and colleague, Agdekin uh, Alayande, uh, was at the time, Reverend Alayande, was principal of the Banan Grammar School. And he had me as a pupil teacher, sort of, for the period January 1957, to September 1957. And in September 1957, I was uh, admitted to the University College Ibadan, UCI, yet a College of London at the time. Yes, it's interesting. I don't think I ever took any formal entry into drama. Um, from my primary school uh, at uh, Ondo and Efalai, I had shown a lot of interest in um, traditional uh, songs, in uh, sketches, in dramatic renditions, and so on. So my uh, secondary school life at uh, Government College Ibadan had precedence to build on in my life in the various uh, you know, places where my father worked at uh, Undu, as I said. But at uh, that time, I was only four. So whatever I was going to do was likely going to be at a fine line. And we were lucky at Efalai to have some of the most brilliant people, as I uh, want to uh, submit, come under the wing of uh, my late father. One in particular I always enjoy citing is Richard Lyode Okwedare, R-L-O as he was called. And he was absolutely brilliant on the uh, organ. And uh, he used to compose songs for 
Christmas, songs for Easter, songs for uh, Harvest, and uh, he was a great inspiration. And so, even before going to the secondary school at Government College, I'd had exposure to drama and the performing arts in that broad sense. And I enjoyed thoroughly the kind of uh, evenings that were arranged. And when my father was to leave uh, a, a father for Esauke, there was a big celebration and uh, Richard Lyodeo Pedare composed a few songs to mark the occasion and uh, got us all kind of very, very emotional as we sang the songs that he composed for, for the occasion. Yes, uh, drama was not a kind of a teaching subject at the University College Ibadan in my years. Uh, drama as a subject was to come a few years after I had graduated. But the important thing to note is that there were preparations for a school of drama which coincided with the period of my graduation. And because of the great success that my own leadership of the University College by the Dramatic Society had produced in several ways, which we will discuss in a few minutes, I turned out to be one of those that obtained fellowships to study drama in uh, different places. Professor J. Adideji got a fellowship to study drama in the U.S. So did, I think, uh, Ola Rotimi and uh, uh, one Yemi Lijadu got a grant to study in France. And so the thinking of the university at the time, with the help of the grant from Rockefeller Foundation to set up the School of Drama, was that those fellows being sent out for training would return to the university and would be the pioneer set of teachers at the School of Drama. So that's how I made my entree into drama from uh, an erstwhile department of English the School of Drama was carved. And it's quite exciting that two of the most uh, devoted teachers of Professor Mbali Mahud, the head of English at the time, were the active uh, persons in the early phase of the School of Drama. And that is the late Jeffrey Axworthy, Professor Jeffrey Axworthy, and the living Professor Martin Bannam, who was at that time a young man a good number of years older than someone like me, but certainly uh, an age mate or close age mate of the Nobel laureate Wale Inka. And uh, the first Nigerian to be appointed to the School of Drama as a lecturer is the living Dimas Nwoko, who has become quite a significant figure not only in uh, drama and the performing arts, but also in areas like, uh, you know, uh, making uh, theaters, building theaters, furnishing theaters, etc. cetera. The Masuoko is uh, multiple, a multivalent genius of whom Nigeria is very proud. Then came Professor J. Adidiji, who had then done his diploma at uh, the Rose Bruford College. And uh, there was also Miss uh, Fumilayo Shomi, who later became Mrs. Fumilayo Adjose Ajay, who had also studied speech and theater in Great Britain. And there was Ebu Dutola, who was then uh, single, and whom J.P. Clark met while she was uh, in her early years as a lecturer in the School of Drama at University of Ibadan. And J.P. Clark did not miss the opportunity of getting wedded to uh, 
uh, Evo Dutrella, who then became Evo Clark. And she proudly calls herself Professor Evo Lua Clark. And she always insists on saying the Evo fully, because everybody says Evo, Evo, Evo. She says Evo Lua. Then, of course, um, there were several other important people who came in on the School of Drama uh, you know, platform. There were American Peace Corps volunteers, people who were themselves very talented. Well, that's very good. Uh, I would say that the students of the present have more models, more examples, more opportunities than the earlier people who, in a sense, might have just stumbled on drama. So you could say that with the new set of students, there was a definite matter of choice. They could have chosen other subjects, but they chose drama. And that, I think, uh, has led to a lot of, uh, you know, beautiful productions and products. And I would say that even in the early days when it, uh, things were not yet formalized into, into a school system, the early leaders of the traveling theaters were a great inspiration to young men and women of the 50s and the 60s. I'm thinking of the uh, Hubert Ogunde uh, Theatre. I'm thinking of the Kola Ogumala Travelling Theatre, the Durula Dipo uh, Travelling Theatre, which he later named, and quite uh, confidently, the National Theatre. He called himself the leader of the Durula Dipo National Theatre. And in a sense, he was a few years ahead of the creation of the National Theatre, which, of course, as you know, came in its own good time. Then, of course, there was in the area of comedy. It wasn't in comedy originally. It was just like all the others when it started out. That's Moses Olaya Dejuma, who later specialized in comedy and who is better known these days as Baba Salah. Even more than his name, his cognomen, his uh, stage name is remembered. So I would say the present lot, as a matter of you know, growth have benefited from both the big achievements and the errors of the earlier groups. I remember when I was teaching at the Bible Grammar School, we used to chase away the mushroom troops who were not able to hold the audience. And uh, they wouldn't come back to the Bible Grammar School because they know that the Bible Grammar School brings in you know, fairly standard productions, both from the English language theatre and from the uh, Yoruba language theatre. I can reminisce about the past, but uh, I think what most people still remember very well was that combination of chance and opportunity which came with first tack. And I still remember that uh, we were summoned to a meeting of the Nigeria National Participation Committee as early as July 1976. And I did say at the time when I was appointed uh, the events chair for drama for Nigerian participation in FESTAC. I did say that that period of five months was barely enough to do anything of standard and that we were starting rather late, you know, calling the National Participation Committee meeting, which was held at uh, Bagauda Lake Hotel, by the way. And calling the meeting as late as July, I thought, was a bit late. However, we had a lot of support from the Federal Ministry of Culture, Federal Department of Culture, under the late Dr. Garba Ashiwaju. And I was asked to work with a committee 
who had uh, the possibilities of doing a dance of the forests, Kiriji or Langbudu. But as time went on, it was quite clear to me that Langbudu gave the biggest opportunity for bringing together the artistic wealth of the then 12 states, later on 19 states of, of, of Nigeria in a kind of synthetic production, which the Fagua story outline gave us great opportunities to use as the substructure for developing a national dramatic and theatrical piece. And I would say that that model of Zangbudu is still being followed today. And it's something one is very happy about and one is happy that recent efforts have gone beyond the so-called standard setter of Langbudo. Uh, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo was himself very pleased with Nigeria's drama entry to uh, the event of Festac. And he asked to meet the company and we brought him to the Festac village where we were camped. The, the next morning, and he went round and shook everybody's hands. So I would say Langbudo, if you are looking for a landmark, the late Chief Wale Ogunemi's work, Langbudo, based on uh, Wale Shoyenka's English uh, version of A Forest of a Thousand Demons, originally in Yoruba by Dio Fagma. Uh, What was there in the past was dedication and a certain naivety. You won't believe it that when we made the film of Kongi's Harvest and I was playing the lead role of Daudu, it did not occur to me to worry about how much I was going to be paid. And I wasn't alone in that kind of naivety. We were also excited about the growth of theatre. We were so excited about the growth of the nation through uh, work like Shoyen Kaz Kongi's Harvest, of which we already had a stage version, but his film version was tremendously, you know, inspiring even to read before we, we began any shooting. And Shoyen and Francis Oladile were lucky to have made a good association with uh, uh, colleagues in America, especially black Americans like uh, Ossie Davies, who was co-director of Kumji's Harvest with Wale Shoenka. What are the things that we have now which we didn't have then? You have more opportunities, more uh, places looking for really gifted and really dedicated people. And I would say that the country has opened up a great deal, thanks for, to the work of the various arts councils. We now have a national tradition of performing arts, which we can be justified, justifiably proud of. And I would say that the uh, recent Abuja carnivals are a testimony to the fact that the growth is ongoing. One thing that we did not have in the past, theaters, uh, properly speaking, apart from the Arts Theater, University of, of Ibadan, that has been corrected, but corrected in a very funny way because instead of building modest structures, the various state governments started to go all out for these wild, huge theaters, which when the currency dictated, they found they could not finish. So the large state centers, you know, suffered from the disadvantage of overambitious uh, leaders who wanted to have big structures in their own state and in their own state alone. But I'm sure that with uh, austerity, things are taking shape. Everybody is learning to cut his coat according to his cloth. So I hope uh, that deals with both the past and the present in uh, an interesting sort of way. And the technological revolution. When 
Langodo was being played at the National Theatre in January 1977. The whole world was seeing it because of BON. The Broadcasting Organization of, of, of Nigeria took full advantage of the technological move forward that Festac gave us the opportunity to establish. And I would say that since then, the opportunities that performing artists, performing directors have had have taken their cue from the availability of knowledge about what's being done in other parts of the, of the world. All through Festac, we had productions by various countries, various black countries. And I would say that uh, our country was able to see that it wasn't lagging behind in world participation in the performing arts. And I think this gave those coming after 77 a new kind of lift of spirit, a new spiritual rebirth, if, if you like. And they could go 